So there are a number of problems that students face when they're revising. Problem number one, the most common, is probably, I just don't have enough time. Problem number two, I don't like this subject. I'm not motivated. Problem number three, okay, I want to revise, but I just don't know how. Problem number four, I normally do revise by reading and highlighting and making some flashcards, but it just doesn't seem to work. And problem number five, why do we have to do exams anyway? Like, what's the point? Well, obviously, I'm going to show you the easiest way to get over all those five problems. The technique is simple and it's coming up now. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is look up my exam board. Let's say it's AQA. I'm just going to go straight to that website and start looking up the subjects. Let's go straight in there. I'm looking for English literature, so I'll scroll down to E. There's English. I'll have that. Now I've got a selection of different courses. I'm going to go with English literature for now. As soon as that opens up, I'm looking for the past papers, which I can see here. I'm clicking straight in and I've got a choice of having everything or just the particular thing I'm looking for. I'm just going to go for question papers at the minute and we'll start with that one, the modern text and poetry. Then scroll down to find the text that you're interested in. So here we go. I'm going to look at Inspector Calls, which is on page four. Now, the first thing that I want you to notice is the choice of question. The first question is an easy one, and it's aimed at candidates who just understand the character and not necessarily the author's ideas in the play. So, question one, always on the character. Question two, suddenly we think about the author's ideas all the way through. Social class, we know, must be the author's perspective, and consequently it's much easier to get a much higher mark. Let's go back to AQA and this time look for the mark scheme. So we'll get the mark scheme to that same paper, which was the modern text and poetry there. We'll click on that and find the inspector calls mark scheme. Now, what you'll notice is that the AO3 for the question on Eric has three bullet points to it. And AO3 is writing about context but you can't write about the author's perspective unless you write about context. So this is where the author's perspective is hidden. Now let's look at the second question that we had on offer. Look how many more points there are to make about the context. That's a massive clue that this is much easier to get high marks on. If we zoom in on this, we can see how many other of the AO1 and AO2 comments are also leading us towards the author's perspective. So when we're writing about society, that's the author's perspective. The inspector's final speech, for those of you who know the play, that's when Priestley gives his perspective and puts it into the mouth of the inspector. All the comments about workers' rights are also Priestley's points of view. How Edna gets treated is the author's point of view about the treatment of the working classes and so on. You can see that it's so much easier to get top marks doing question two. The next really useful bit of information is that there are only ever about six character questions that can come up with any text. It doesn't matter which one you're doing. There won't be more than six characters that you'll get asked about in the exam. And then in the question two, which are about the big ideas in the novel or the play, whatever it is you're studying, there are probably only about five big ideas you could possibly ever get asked about in the exam. Now, the advantage of the big idea question, if we zoom in here, how does Priestley explore the importance of social class in an inspector calls, is that the big idea of social class will involve every single character in the play. So that's the most efficient place to put your revision. Do the big idea questions that are about the author's perspective, include the characters in that, when you've done five of these, you've done the whole text. So five essays will give you all the revision you need to get 100% on every single question that could ever come up, I promise you. Okay, now we know which questions to do. How do we use the mark scheme? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste all of this into Word. 
Converting for a PDF, it is a bit of a pain, so I'm just going to go through these and reorganize it. Okay, now, do I have an essay plan? Well, not quite. I have the content of my essay, but what order should I go in? How will this help me? Well, to do that, I'm going to convert my bullet points into numbers. I can see that there are actually five in each assessment objective, and a mini miracle happens. So let's have a look at the first one here. Mr. Burling's comments about how society works and his wife's snobbery. So that's my reference to the text. What am I going to say about those? Well, I'm going to link that to this number one here. So it does actually link. So their snobbery will be linked to the way they talk about the workers, not just Eva, but also Edna and the other workers in the factory. So our prediction is that that will also link to number one here, highlighting the luxury of the Burlings' lives. Well, yes, it does, because it contrasts with the lack of luxury, the poverty of the workers. So now I can see that I have an essay plan. My first paragraph after my introduction is going to be linking those number ones together. And if I try to match up all the other numbers by colour coding them, you'll see that this also works. This gives me a five paragraph structure to add to my introduction and my conclusion. Boom. Let's imagine I really don't know the play well at all. I haven't been paying attention in class. And now I've just grown up and thought I want to do brilliantly at the exam. What am I going to do? I'm going to visit Spark Notes. Other online guides are available, but this one is probably the most developed with the most academic interpretations that will help you get top grades. Right, I know that I'm going to start with Mr. Burling and then Mr. Burling and Gerald talking about Eva. And our very first quotation, number one, a man has to make his own way, has to look after himself, we recognise as Burling. And we know that this is a go-to quotation that you're going to use almost every single essay. So we'll go uh, copy that and we're going to paste it after point one so that we know it backs up that interpretation. When he's focusing on his family, that partly shows how society works. There is no big society. We don't care about anyone else. We only care about ourselves, our own influence and our own wealth. And then we explore the rest of the internet or our own notes or our knowledge organisers, anything we want to find the information we need to add to our plan. So we can also go to GCSE Bite Size. Here you can see fantastic quotations. I just stick them into my plan again and so on, darting all over the internet, just finding the really useful stuff. Only the quotations that I'll need because we need to be quick. We don't have much time, do we? A search for Eric. I scroll down, and this one looks the most promising brine class. Uh, when I click on it, look at that. It's got brilliant revision notes for all the characters. In fact, I'm going to download the whole thing. Thank you, brine class. When I scroll down, I could take any of these final quotations. Uh, so I'll just take those last two. So if we shrink that down, you can see I've got an essay plan with all the right quotations mapped out. I'm just going to reorganize it to put in a different order. And then the last bit is a quotation from Edna, and I'll take that one because obviously it links to the title and is by far the most important in the play. OK, I now have a plan for my five paragraphs. So this is number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Quotations for everything and a logical sequence that I can work through for my essay. The next step is write the essay. Now, if I go back to my 11 question papers and search through them all, I will find all the most important themes of the novels that I'm studying or the plays, whatever it is, and therefore I can do one of those essays for each one. And that's it. Revision done, grade 8 and 9 secured. Unless I just don't have the writing stamina, in which case I'll have to settle for a grade 7. Never mind. If you have made it this far, it's probably worth subscribing because you know every video I bring you is going to get you grade 7, 8 or 9. Do the work and the result is yours. See you soon on my channel, I hope. I'm pretty annoyed about those nettles though. Idiot. <laughs>